Greetings, everyone. And welcome back to our Standing Watch program. We have witnessed this week a truly remarkable achievement. I'm talking about the landing of the Mars Phoenix lander on the Red Planet. It happened on May 25, 2008, but was, what was truly remarkable was the fact that it was set down on the planet right on schedule. You see, on August 4, 2007, the Delta rocket transporting the lander took off, and it was stated at that time that the targeted time for landing would be May 25, 2008, exactly when it happened. It was a 420 million miles journey, and it cost us about 400 or so million dollars, so pretty much a dollar for a mile. And so the question is, my friends, what is this money being spent for? Is this a worthwhile endeavor? Let me read to you from a news article which tells us the goal of the mission. Actually, there are two. It says, the Phoenix Mars lander is looking for evidence of traces of organic compounds in the baked and moistened samples, which would be a possible indicator of conditions favorable for life, either now or once upon a time. It also goes on to say that it might lead to a potential colonization of the planet Mars, something which the very famous Professor Hawkins recently said was the only chance for human survival. A grim prospect, if you think about it. But so the whole idea of sending these probes and these spacecrafts to another planet is to find out whether life has evolved on those planets. And it goes back to the concept that the evolution theory is correct, that all of us today living on the planet Earth have evolved. And you might remember what the evolution theory is postulating. It is saying that once upon a time, billions and millions of years ago, gases from the universe somehow created a cell in a organic soup. And out of the cell came all the life which we have today. And Charles Darwin, the modern inventor of the evolution theory, told us that man is nothing else but the descendant of a mollusk. So you are just walking around as sophisticated mollusks, according to the evolution theory. And of course, the evolution theory is saying that all of this happened because of time and chance. There was no design, there was no plan, there was no creator involved. And my friends, let's make no mistake. The evolution theory was invented by scientists who looked for a creation without a creator. And if they could only find, quote-unquote, evidence of past life, whatever life there might have been on another planet like planet Mars, that would be, in their minds, a strong evidence and support for their theory. But again, let me tell you, my friends, the evolution theory is just that. It's a theory. It's not proven fact. And if you listen to those who tell you that it is, you have to recognize that this is not the truth. In fact, it's not even a theory. It's a fairy tale. We have written a booklet several years ago, and I am pleased to offer it to you on this program. This booklet is titled, The Theory of Evolution, A Fairy Tale for Adults? Question mark. And this term is used by a French biologist who had studied into the evolution theory for many, many years, and has concluded that all there is is a fairy tale, a fabrication. And there are many scientists around the world, in the United States of America, in Europe, in other parts of the world, who agree with him, who also tell you that evolution is nothing but a human fabrication. The fact that you read in magazines and in pseudo-scientific newspaper articles that evolution is a fact doesn't make it so. And analyzing this, you will have to conclude that the mission to Mars with the purpose of showing some kind of evidence of life there is a total absurd 
waste of money. Money which could be so much more profitably spent on this earth, which is wasted, which is pilfered for something which is absolutely not true because the Bible tells you, my friends, that the evolution theory is wrong. The Bible tells you that God created man, that God created all the life which you see today on this planet, and there is no indication in the Bible that God created anywhere on any other planet life comparable to what we have here on this earth. And the concept that the colonization of space is the only hope for survival it's just wrong. The Bible tells you that, yes, human survival will be threatened, but humans will be saved, but not by human efforts. In the book of Matthew, you read that Jesus Christ said there will be great tribulation, so much so, which has never been on this earth and which will never be since the creation of man. And if those days wouldn't be shortened, no human being would be saved alive. But then it goes on to say that Jesus Christ will shorten those days by returning to this earth and cut those days short. Now, people scoff at that idea. They rather believe in the absurd, ridiculous concept of the evolution theory than the Word of God. So please do yourself a favor, my friends, and ask for this free booklet. Now, you can go to our website, standingwatch.org. It is posted there, and you can read it online. Now, if you do require a hard copy, you can write us you can write and send an email to info, like information, info at standingwatch, one word, dot org. Let me repeat that. Info at standingwatch, dot org. And you can request a hard copy and we'll be happy to send it to you free of charge as long as our supply lasts. Don't be deceived by these spectacular ideas like man was created through evolution. It didn't happen that way. There is no way that you can substantiate that concept. And so do yourself a favor and learn what scientists tell you about the scientific impossibility that evolution might have ever happened. Thanks very much for watching. This is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program.